Hello everybody, this is Joey, and since we already had a tier list for ranking 10 different Jokers, I thought it would be fair to try to rank different Batman. Now, this list isn't going to have 10 of them, as much as I could think of 10, but some of them that I tried to think of weren't really memorable, haven't seen them in a while, or known much about them through their media to really warrant it for this list. So ones like Injustice, which I forgot the Injustice Joker, but again, didn't remember much about it, haven't played enough of Injustice to uh, to add them, either of them on their lists. Uh, there's Batman from Scooby-Doo, technically there is a cameo episode of him, maybe even more than one, I'm not sure. There's, um, there's Batfleck, so I can't really rate the one that's from Batman v Superman. And there's the Gotham version, um, from the TV show. There's probably a couple other ones. You could let me know in the comments below, uh, how you would rank them among some or any others that I might have missed or the ones that are on the list. So, um, and if you want to see more of these tier list videos on this channel, then like the video. So... Going forward, I have about seven or eight Batman to talk about for today. And this one, to start off on rank F, probably is just enough to make it on the list. Because <laughs> truth be told, there isn't a lot going for him. And it probably could have been left off and nobody would be none the wiser. Lego Batman, the video game, the first one. This one... Much like I said in the Joker video, doesn't have a voice actor because they didn't have voice actors for Lego games at that point, and therefore had a little bit of different characteristics compared to other voice acted ones from other Lego Batman video games. With this one, there isn't really a sense of him being a detective or um, being intimidating or anything like that. You don't really get a lot of... Batman tropes through him or even that much to stand him out. The only things I could think that stand him out would be some of the gadgets because he is a blank slate otherwise. Even in the cutscenes, there's really not much that he is doing more uniquely than any other uh, main characters in the, you know, in the game. So I'm not really, I'm trying my best not to rank these Batman based on how many gadgets they have, what kind of back cave there is. That, that, that really shouldn't play into these. And I'd like to count their Bruce Wayne counterparts for the, each of these as well, but there's not a lot of them that even have Bruce Wayne shown or for long throughout their media, so I don't think that's going to change much. So with that said, this one ranks at F. He's kind of a blank slate. And even though he has some good gadgets, there isn't really much that makes him more unique from the other Batman on this list. The next one I actually have some distaste for. I mean, I'll watch the Dark Knight trilogy, uh, you know, time and time again. And there are still good parts to it. But Christian Bale's Batman just doesn't rub me the right way. I mean, he does have some good investigative work and some intimidation, but his raspy voice, whether or not I have a raspy voice right now, I, I, <laughs> I have a little sore throat. Um, his raspy voice just doesn't do it for me. Doesn't seem as intimidating as other Batman, which don't have to put on an exaggerated voice. Um, and the look of him just, it just doesn't feel right. So, like, just the costume itself. I kind of mentioned that with other versions of the Joker, so I thought I'd throw a little bit of that in here for uh, the different versions of Batman. But, like I said, it's more about the personality. And next one on the list, I... <laughs> you know what? I'm trying to think this through on which one I would throw in here, because a bunch of them are more virtuous. They, they have a little bit more characteristics about, like, holding up a certain code and having intimidation and, you know, also investigative skills to get things done. I'm sorry, but once again, Adam West is just like the Cesar Romero Joker, where he's in a category of his own. He isn't supposed to be as intimidating or brooding as other versions of Batman, 
because he's from a different time. He's from the 60s where it wasn't as deep and it wasn't as, uh, you know, dark. A lot of the characters across, you know, TV shows in general would have been more lighthearted. So he is great for what he is. He's good in his own um, element. I love the 60s Batman movie. I, I can't remember how many times I've seen it. And as I said in the Joker video, it was the first version of Batman that I've seen on any media. Across a TV show, movie, whatever. There's actually a whole bunch of TV show ones. I'm just remembering now that I uh, forgot to add in this list, but I digress. Because like I said, I don't know much about them. <clears throat> but as it is, Adam West is a bit drastically different from other versions of Batman, and that's why he sits where he does, but he has his own spot. And who can forget, some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. Moving up the list, we have a couple of them that are just intimidating enough, and just, like, able to do a little bit more than the Batman we've seen before, Trying to think if we should add another one in here, or... Hmm. I'm trying to go through these and think, like, what what works better. I'm actually trying to think this through, and I want to try to make these as efficient as possible, and... And just, like, breeze through them. But I will admit, some of these kind of throw me one way or the other. You know what? Let's, let's keep that one out. And... I'm going to throw Michael Keaton in its spot. So for, so for rank B, I have Michael Keaton, Batman, and... I can't remember the voice actor, unfortunately, for this one, but it's basically Lego Batman 2 onward, including Lego Dimensions. It's another Lego Batman from the video game realm, but this one actually has a little bit more to his character. This one has some, you know, he, he has a good voice actor for him. I do like that, that impression that he does. Um, he does have this sense of being investigative, being like, thorough in his in, in research um and he, he actually does have some emotion to him he does have some some feelings one way or the other between other superheroes with the supervillains it works now with michael keaton batman he's still a fun one i still enjoyed him in uh 1989 it's a great batman film and um for me it seems like, again, I, I couldn't really get the investigative part um, from him. I'm even factoring a little bit of his Bruce Wayne in here. Um, but he's definitely intimidating. He definitely starts getting into the brooding Batman that we know nowadays. So, I, I do like his performance. I can't remember, I know I've seen Batman Returns, but I can't remember that much or any specific examples, at least, of Michael Keaton's Batman from there, which is strange, because that was either second or third Batman film that I've seen. But then again, I haven't seen it in a while, so maybe um, that's why it's not coming to my mind right now. 89 was a later Batman that I've seen, but also more recent, so I have a little bit better to work from. Maybe I have to watch some of these again. I don't know. Now, within the A tier... I'm going to have to throw it to Will Arnett's Lego Batman. So, based on the Lego Batman movie and Lego Movie 1 and 2. Again, he's kind of in a class of his own because he is brooding. He does have a lot of the characteristics of other Batman, but he's also... He's kind of like Deadpool. He doesn't take himself too seriously all the time. He does have, like, you know some arrogance to him, which is unlike other Batman that we've seen. Um, but it's, but it's a fun arrogance, you know, it's like something that you don't feel like he's a jerk. 
um, or, or not not entirely a jerk. It's like something that's actually fun to watch. I mean, the opening sequence of Lego Batman movie says it all. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I, I do like this version. I do like in the Lego Batman movie, there is a lot of development with him as a character and, you know, trying to get over the trope of you know, his parents are dead and the trauma that goes with that and trying to embrace a family once again uh, or even just other people in general, you know? Because that's something that with Batman is important, but I don't think it's often expressed. And I know, we know the origin. That part is expressed, to, you know, literally to death, figuratively, however you want to put it, no pun intended. Pun may be intended. Um... But it's like, what does that mean for him is a different thing. And that kind of leads us into the S tier where we got two from the same voice actor in slightly different versions. I, I feel like they are pretty close to each other between the animated version from the TV series and the uh, performance from The Killing Joke, both done by Kevin Conroy. Definitely my favorite of of the Batman because they're intimidating they're virtuous they have a code they do have moral like or they, they do have um they do have development I remember one or two episodes early on from the Batman animated series I forget exactly what the count I forget exactly all the details of it but there's a certain episode where he has, like, a very serious conflict, and maybe it was just a hallucination or something, but still, like, struggling with his own trauma. And that's something I haven't seen that much out of any of the Batman, which is pretty important. And it's definitely something that's like, well, it is obviously a cause for how he got into the role, but it's also something that he has to live with and eventually face on his own. It's, it's, I, I forget exactly which episode it was, but I don't know, it's the episode where he does the more affirming, I am Batman, and it works well. It's a really good scene and a really good um, animated episode. Now, with the Kevin Conroy from The Killing Joke, much like I said for The Joker, there's a whole dynamic between the two that works very well. It's the idea of them being equals to each other. They both know that they're equals. And with Batman, it's trying to understand the Joker, but also to neutralize him. You know, there's a there's the infamous joke at the end where um, it tries to explain they're both equals, but they both go in separate directions as far as how they understand a bad day and how they um, work off of each other. So it is pretty powerful. I do appreciate that version. And to even see that in like the opening part of the killing joke as the comic and for the animated version, it'll be like halfway through because we're not going to talk about the first 30 minutes. <laughs> it's a little wishy washy. So, um, with that scene, like in Arkham and like, talking with what he doesn't know at the time is the impersonator for the Joker. Um, that works very well. I really do like that. That Batman is a little bit more than just a crime-fighting vigilante. He is actually trying to understand the villains and actually trying to reason with them. Um, instead of always using his fist, but using his words as well. So that works very well. And there is my tier list. Let me know again in the comments below what you guys think about this one or your own tier list in the comments. Maybe other Batman that I forgot about um, or just didn't think of fitting into the video. Again, leave a like if you want to see more of these on this channel. If not, it'll probably get bumped to some other channel. And we'll see you next time with more videos.